The Power of Peace, Co-Creating a New World in 2011 Many people may not associate the word power with the word peace. Perhaps it is because power is often associated with force, which is often anything but peaceful. Those who have read Dr. David Hawkins' book, Power vs. Force, may realize that true power is an innate spiritual quality, whereas force is often seen as a military-like feature. To me, world peace can never occur on earth until its people step up and exercise our inherent natural power together. However, I feel that we will actually do that this year, in 2011. When we do, we will co-create a new world together. 2012 will be vastly more peaceful than what we have always known, all because of what is called the awakening. Now, I am quite certain that if I were able to survey every human being on the planet, asking the question, do you want peace? The response would be overwhelmingly, yes! I'm also certain as well that most politicians would also answer yes. Of course, we all know that politicians lie, yet we have tended to believe them anyway. Believing their lies is exactly how we have given our power away. Let us consider why politicians lie. To understand the political arena, we must comprehend the underlying forces behind its charade. There are two main ones that I can see. Greed for money and lust for power are most obvious. In this case, power actually means force or control over others, and greed follows the belief that whoever ends up with the most wins. While there are altruistic individuals that enter or vie for positions of so-called authority to make a positive difference in the world, many merely play out their shadow elements. By this I mean that the causal motivation is fear, based on the faults and prevailing paradigm of separation and lack. To many, this may not even be conscious. Here's what I see happening. People are waking up all over the planet, and the fear-based leadership of the world is being exposed in its corruption. You see, those who have conspired to rule the world have been able to operate for centuries, maybe even millennia, because the people have been largely unaware of higher realities. In other words, humanity has been unconscious. This is changing rapidly. Conspiracies are interesting things. They require ignorance on both sides of the equation. Let me explain. Everything is consciousness. The way the world works, as I see it, is that the parts of our consciousness that we are unwilling to own show up outside ourselves as separate. It doesn't matter which side you're standing on, the part of you that you are unwilling to admit will always manifest somewhere out there. For the leaders, the unwillingness is about disowned weakness. For the people, it is about unaccepted power. Both are imprisoned by the illusion of separation that leads to the belief in lack, which I said earlier. This enslaves everyone. In other words, humans, until this current generation, have been unable to connect the dots. Without connecting the dots, nothing makes sense and everything is unsustainable. This is the matrix in which we have lived the one that is changing. Everything that has seemed inside out and upside down is being reversed, a reverse flow of energy. This is a highly spiritual cosmic event. It is the disillusionment that precedes enlightenment. Seemingly all of a sudden, more and more people are becoming aware of the interconnectedness of all life. Let's take the example of an event that happened at the beginning of this year. Around Christmas time, terrorists bombed a Coptic Christian church in Alexandria, Egypt. A week later, the Coptic Christians went ahead with their plans for the celebration of the new year. 
Of course there was concern in light of the recent bombing. Thousands of Muslims, which long ago honored people of the book, formed human shields around the Coptic churches to prevent the extremists from carrying out more attacks. Included in that human shield were well-known Egyptian actors, as well as the two sons of the Egyptian president, Hosni Mubarak. The Muslims organized under the slogan, We either live together or we die separately. <laughs> That's not what it says. We either live together or we die together. One said, We are one. This was an attack on Egypt as a whole, and I am standing with the cops because the only way things will change in this country is if we come together. This is an excellent example of what will happen increasingly in 2011 as spiritual energies are downloaded and outpoured upon humanity. We can no longer afford the luxury, which is actually a curse, of scapegoating. Almost always, scapegoating is a smokescreen that diverts attention away from the true perpetrators of crimes against humanity. This is certainly the case when our media tends to blame the Muslims for a significant part of the world's problems. That is simply not the case. So, once again, I ask the question I continue to ask. Who are the real terrorists? My answer will always be the same, until it changes. Terrorists are not people who have nothing to lose by dying. Rather, they, have, they are people who have something to gain by the death of others. They are the people who promote war and dissension around the world. Yes, the politicians are the puppets of these terrorists, which is why politicians almost always lie. The truth is, they do not serve the people. They serve international bankers and multinational corporations. The former, banks, commit economic terrorism through fraudulent practices and extreme usury. Multinational corporations also increase their bottom line through deception. Drug companies withhold cures because there is no money in health. Weapons manufacturers finance war because it is highly profitable. Governments are also privately owned corporations that benefit a relative handful of people, which is why the gap between the rich and the poor continues to grow exponentially. These are things every human being on the planet needs to know. In fact, there is an amazing wealth of information on the internet that reveals the truth about the grand deception by what we call the establishment. As we the people realize these things, we have the opportunity to take action. Many, upon learning the truth, will become very angry. And while this could lead to more violence, there is a growing awareness that this will not fix anything. Neither will the attempt to fight the establishment. On the contrary, we, especially those who can see more clearly, have the responsibility to heal the divisions within our own being. As we do, the lights will shine ever more brightly. This will only further expose the lies of this establishment. Ultimately, even the establishment will agree to the truth. They have no choice that remains reasonable to them, for they will have backed themselves into a corner in the glare of light that does not allow for much wiggle room. This is what I see happening in 2011 the fruit of the eighth phase of the evolution of consciousness now ending. Integrity will overtake greed and lust for power. This is the year of the tipping point. Critical mass has already been exceeded. In less than one year, according to Dr. Carl Kalaman's interpretation of the Mayan calendar, the ninth and final phase in the evolution of human consciousness will begin and end. By next year, 2012, peace on earth is possible. I would even say probable. In the meantime, 2011 will be a year of rapid revelations and significant shifts in humanity's understanding of the matrix in which we have been imprisoned. In closing, I ask each one of you to lay aside all of your preconceived ideas of how you think the world is or should be. 
Be willing to let go of belief systems that have fostered your perception of separation. You are not separate from anything or anyone. No separation is the new paradigm that is sweeping our world. As the Muslims in Egypt realized, we are one. This is not simply an esoteric teaching or a mystical doctrine. It is a scientific fact. We are each a part of the circle of life, and we can no longer afford the insanity of not connecting the dots. Our true power is in the realization that we are infinite and eternal beings, woven into the cosmic fabric of creation itself. As we reach this awareness, we make peace within ourselves, forgiving and showing compassion. We realize that whatever we call the Creator, that power is predisposed toward life and operates on principles we call love. In 2011, let us come together as never before, listening to and actually hearing each other as we are graced with the ability to look beyond all faults and see the heart of humanity. The universe has heard our cries for peace. Truth and justice with mercy are now flooding the planet, and this will increase exponentially as the year progresses. May peace prevail in me. May peace prevail in you. When it does, peace will prevail on earth. Thank you.